Hi, I'm Joan. As young as I can remember, I ask questions, endless questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? How was I made? If I cut my finger, how did it heal itself? And so on and so on. Now, I never got any answers that satisfied my curiosity, so I stopped asking. But actually, not getting answers made me question everything more. There had to be a reason for my existence. Or did it all happen by chance? I did attend church, but got no real answers there either. I just found it so boring listening to a sermon as a child when there was no children's church that I stopped even trying to make any sense of it at all. But, strangely, at about the age of four, I became aware of Jesus' presence in my life. Now, it was nothing spooky. It was a fairly difficult time in my life then as a child. But Jesus somehow became part of it. Not in any sense, though, because I was a good, happy, obedient child, but rather I was wild and untamed, used to doing my own thing. I still have that tendency. Uh, very often given to bad behaviour. But underneath, I was very shy, fearful, sad, lonely and distressed. But I was still looking for answers as I got older. All the usual thought about why did so many people have to suffer and struggle and be homeless and in desperation and poverty stricken and so much more. I didn't see God in any of that. But I kept trying to pursue God to find reasons and answers to life's problems. What I didn't realise then was that it was actually God who was pursuing me. Why? Why me? Why would God bother with someone as wayward and rebellious as me? But as a teenager, I heard a gospel message of redemption, probably for the first time, that God loved me. Wow. Maybe that was the answer to that question. As I had always seen myself as unlovable, sad and broken and beyond repair. So that started my life's journey with God. So I got a Bible. I'd never read a Bible before. And I started to get some answers to some of my questions. And I'm still asking questions. So, but I discovered then that God didn't just love me randomly, but that he loved the whole world so much that he gave his only son to die on a cross, a cruel death, so that we might live and be saved from destruction. Broken, lost, undeserving people, just like me. So with much thought, I decided to answer God's call on my life, put my trust in him, and to give my life to this, to serve this Jesus, who had given his all for me. This amazing Jesus, who is counterculture, friend of people not only of high position, as often the world does, but also those of low position, who also loved unconditionally and compassionately, but who was criticised for hanging around with sinners, friend of prostitutes, showing mercy and grace to messed up people and healing the sick and the destitute. Now, he only had three short years of his ministry. And in those three years, he turned the world upside down. But he did have a stern warning for hypocrisy and self-righteousness also. So if you've never read the Bible and you want to know more about this Jesus, or you're sceptical about the very existence of God, or doubts about the truth of the gospel of Jesus, you're not alone in that. So I urge you to get a Bible and read it, even if it's only for critical analysis, or to disprove it altogether. Just give it a chance.
and you too may find the truth that you have always been searching for, as others have done by trying to disprove it also. Is a dedicated Christian life easy? Absolutely not. This is a God that I fail constantly, but he is the unfailing one. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. But is it easy to love our enemies, to love the unlovable, to keep forgiving, even if we keep getting wronged against or continually hurt? Is it easy never to repay evil with evil or to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow Jesus no matter what? No, it surely is not easy. And in our own strength, it's impossible. So it's good to be reminded of the words from the Apostle Paul. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And it goes on to say, So our very weakness shows what a powerful God we have. For when we are weak, then he is strong. And we also need to remember that when we don't get it right, which happens to me so many times, most of the time, mess up again and again, fail in all our good intentions, although there may be many of them, just bring it to God. For there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So while... It may be a difficult commitment to make. It has to be the best and most fulfilling life there is. Not just for now, but for all eternity. And for for me, I wouldn't want to commit a lifetime to something that was a lie, but to something that is real and of lasting value, that ultimately gives us the joy and peace which our hearts are yearning for. But if you find yourself in any kind of darkness or in a dark place in your mind right now, try to hold on to, as I often do, to Jesus' words, He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So I pray that many of you, while you're hearing this, will find that light of life for yourselves. Thank you.